I'm going to try and answer the question, what is energy? And more specifically, can it be defined in physical terms? To do this, I'm going to look at three things. What different types of energy there are, where the energy came from, and how it behaves. But to start, let's look at the different types of energy. Kinetic, heat, chemical, strain, light, gravitational, nuclear, and electrical. However, when you look at them more deeply, they're all either kinetic energy or the ability to have kinetic energy at a later point in time. For example, gravitational potential is where you're at a height and have potential to fall. Electrical energy is the movement of charged particles like electrons. Nuclear energy is the energy stored within bonds of an atom, holding its protons and neutrons together. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of particles in an object. Chemical potential is energy stored in intermolecular bonds that can be given off at a later point in time as heat. Light energy is the movement of photons or light particles. And finally, strain energy is pent up energy that when released will move an object back to its original position. So this begs the question, what is kinetic energy? To explain kinetic energy, we need to look at where all of our energy came from. And that's the Big Bang. The Big Bang is the earliest point that we can trace energy back to. But where is this point? Unfortunately, there isn't one point where the universe originated from, because the Big Bang was not an explosion. It was where the entire universe fit into the space smaller than a pinprick and then expanded from every point. So in effect, everywhere is the centre of the universe and there is no one point that we can use as a reference point for movement. For example, you're walking down a street at four miles per hour and a cat is sat down on the pavement next to you. To the cat, it looks like it is staying still and you're moving at four miles per hour. However, it's just as correct to say that you're standing still and the cats, along with the entire street, are moving at four miles per hour in the opposite direction. This concept is called relativity, and it's one of Einstein's theories. One of the other aspects of relativity is relativistic mass. What this means is that when something moves at a really high speed, it begins to gain mass. Here is the equation that describes this. So the mass of an object when it's moving is equal to the mass when it isn't, multiplied by this clause. V is the object's velocity, and C is the speed of light. This essentially means that you need a velocity of at least 10% of the speed of light to have a noticeable change. 10% of the speed of light is roughly 30,000 kilometers per second, and the Earth's diameter is 12,700 kilometers. One of the places that they experience this phenomenon every day is at the Large Hadron Collider, at the CERN facilities in Geneva. The last aspect of energy that I want to look at is E equals mc squared. Now you've most certainly heard of this famous equation before. However, do you know what it means? This equation means that energy and mass are equivalent and that you can make energy from mass and vice versa. For example, if you have a one kilogram brick, when that brick's mass is converted into energy, 9 times 10 to the 16 joules of energy are created. That's enough energy to power the entire UK for more than five and a half days. In conclusion, we can see the different types of energy, where all the energy came from, the relationships between energy and mass, and the relationship between relative velocity and relative mass. We can map in great detail the energetic properties of an object, but we are unable to define what energy is in physical terms.